Base coat is probably one of the most important parts of any gel manicure. It's what really creates the adhesion between the nail plate and anything you put on top of it. So today I wanted to deep dive into what base coat is, how you should be applying it, and some of the differences between different base coats you might see on the market. Hey guys, I'm Liz from The Nail Hub and I think Base Coat is probably one of the most underrated products in the entire nail industry. When it comes to doing any type of gel service, Base Coat is probably the most important part of any gel service. It's what really creates that layer of adhesion between your nail and anything that you put on top of it. A lot of people also write to me saying, how do you prevent lifting? Well, prep is one, but your base is another. And I think this is such an important piece of any service that I wanted to go over it in great depth. Before we get started, I wanted to quickly make sure that we're all talking the same language. So I've got a quick overview and some terminology for you guys. All right, we're gonna be going over what is base for, what kind should you use, do I need to use primer, which a lot of people ask me that, how to apply base, how to prevent lifting, and some key words that you guys all need to know before we get started is sanding free. Sanding free is a type of base coat that you don't need to overly file or buff the nail. So I'll be going over that. Adhesion is the word that we use to describe the way that the base coat attaches to the nail plate. So when we're working on nails, we wanna create adhesion between the product we're applying and the nail plate itself. We're also gonna be talking about inhibition layer. Inhibition layer is the part of gel that does not cure because it's exposed to oxygen during the curing process. Not all gel formulas have an inhibition layer, but most base coats do, and it just depends on the chemical formulation. So basically when we put our base coat on, we put it in the lamp and we cure it, the sticky layer that is left over is the inhibition layer, and that inhibition layer is actually uncured gel. The nail plate, I will show you guys in a second. We're gonna talk about soak off versus hard gels, and that applies to base coat as well. And we're also gonna talk about LED versus CFL. Um, I'll show you guys a quick little overview of LED lamps, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about CFL in just a second. All right, so let's get started first by talking about a lamp. Um, and this is something really important. I've got a lamp here that I wanna show you guys. And one of the biggest misconceptions about LED versus UV is that they are different things. LED and UV lamps actually both emit UV light. So let me show you guys a quick example of an LED lamp. LED stands for light emitting diode, which are these little bad boys right in here. And they're basically a type of light bulb. So if we think about light bulbs inside of a lamp. You may have also seen lamps that have tubes, like white tubes coming out that are light bulbs. Those are actually fluorescent lights. So that's where we get the CFL, which is cool fluorescent, or it could be CCFL, which is cool cathode fluorescent. And basically they're those fluorescent tubes of bulbs that we need to replace every so often. The advantage with LED is they never have to be replaced. And it's also a much more focused type of light because it's almost like if you were to think about LED as little laser beams of light shooting into the gel, when we're talking about CFL bulbs, it's kind of more of an ambient glow and it cures the gel from the outside in. So that's why we're able to get away with much faster cure times with LED. It's a much more focused type of light. There's also little teeny tiny mirrors inside of the LEDs that allow us to focus that. And of course the reflective surface inside of our lamp. Um, there are some base coats that are LED only, which means they will only cure in a certain spectrum of light. And remember, when we're talking about LED versus UV lamps, the misnomer is that we think that LED and UV are different things. Both LED and CFL lamps, which are most commonly called UV, are actually all UV lamps. Just depends on what type of bulb they use and also the spectrum of light that they use as well. Um, the spectrum of light uh, is split on the visible spectrum really close to ultraviolet. It's actually still visible, but it's very, very close to ultraviolet. That's why we call everything UV. And, uh, and some gels are only cured in a certain part of that spectrum, and other gels are actually cured in the full spectrum or on another end of the spectrum. So recently, we've also had the development of lamps that are hybrid. So like this Cocoist Infinity lamp I have here is an example of a hybrid lamp. 
It says LED and UV, which again is just manufacturers trying to address the fact that a lot of people in the industry don't understand the difference between LEDs and fluorescent bulbs. Um, but essentially this is a UV lamp that cures the full spectrum of light and will allow me to cure both traditional UV only gels as well as LED gels, which is really nice. And typically the hybrid lamps also cure everything a lot faster because it has that LED bulb that has that, that focus type of light that really gets down in there and cures everything from the inside out. So much better curing, much faster curing, um, but just wanted to clarify that for you. Okay, so let me um, switch over to my tabletop here. Okay, so I'm gonna start with um, a non-sanding base coat. And remember, non-sanding is basically a type of base that is such a thin consistency and the formula is so specialized that we really don't need to buff the nail plate or file the nail plate. Now, does that mean you can just put it on a nail plate without prepping or cleaning at all? No, but you definitely do not have to etch the nail plate or file it or rough it up in order for this base coat to be able to adhere to the nail. So that's really nice. Um, this particular one comes in a pot, which I will show you guys in a second how to apply potted base coats. And, uh, and you can see it's got just a clear consistency, a teeny bit yellow, but we don't really care because it's base. And it just all depends on the chemical formulation of the base coat, but this particular one is, um, is a non-sanding base coat. Okay, then we've also got kind of more of a typical base coat. A lot of you guys have probably seen base coat that comes in a bottle like this, and it's got kind of a medium gel consistency to it. It is a soak off base coat. And again, um, on here it says UV LED soak off base gel. Um, so this is just a bottled version of a different type of base coat. There's also base coats that are a, a hybrid between, for example, okay, so let me show you guys kind of a, a protein bonder. Protein bonders have become very popular in the gel industry because they create even more adhesion than just base coat alone but there's some disadvantages to that. One is if you use a protein bonder, it's gonna be much more difficult for you to soak off the gel nails um, if you're looking to soak off gel polish manicures. Um, and also it does create a layer between the nail plate and the base coat itself. So if you overdo it with your protein bonder, you can actually create a layer that's too thick for the base coat to actually attach to the nail plate and that can cause some problems. Advantages of protein bonder, it definitely hides fill lines and it also creates that extra adhesion that I was talking about. So there are some base coats that are kind of a hybrid between a base like this that's just gel and also a protein bonder. And TAC is one of those. So TAC is actually a product that is part gel and part kind of protein bonder. It also, based on what I smell in it, has a teeny bit of acid primer in it as well, just a teeny, teeny bit, I can smell it. Um, and, uh, and it's very, very thin. So I'll show you guys, see how there's like really no, there's really no, and you can see it like bouncing around in there, the liquid. Okay. So gel wouldn't do that. This is more of a liquid type of base and it does air dry. So if I put it on my nail here, I've got oil on my nail, but it will air dry without me putting it in the lamp. You can also cure this particular hybrid type of base coat to create extra adhesion. So basically what that does is it cures the gel agents that are inside of it, and it also air dries at the same time, so you get an extra tacky uh, type of surface to put your gel on top of. So this is why it's called kind of a bonding agent, but you can also use this as a base coat. So there are some like this on the market that are kind of in between a base like this that's just gel and also a protein bonder that's pure liquid, okay? And then there are also products on the market that are all-in-ones. So typically with gel services, you're gonna have a three-part service, which is base, color, and top coat. Um, some gels that are out now are also one-step gels, which I have several examples of, um, but there are one set gels out there that allow you to do all kinds of stuff. This one in particular is a hard gel, uh, but there's also, like we've got one here. This is also a one step. Let me just show you kind of what that looks like. Okay, so usually one steps are very thin because they're meant to be used as base, builder, and top coat. 
um, and it's kind of like multi-purpose. These two are hard, which means they cannot be soaked off with acetone, but there's also, and forgive me for the jar because the jar is different than how it looks, how it's supposed to look actually. Um, this is actually soak off. So if I didn't know what was in these jars, right? How the heck would I know which one is hard gel and which one is soak off? This is the soak off one, this is the hard gel. So if you look at them, it doesn't necessarily mean that the soak off is gonna be any different. It just means that this particular formula is gonna be porous, which means acetone is gonna be able to get in there and break this product apart on the nail plate, okay? So just depends on what type of service you wanna do, whether you wanna do soak off, whether you wanna do hard gel. I actually prefer hard gel but I typically put a soak off base under my hard gel, which is another little tip and trick. Okay, so let's get into, we talked a little bit about the different types of base coats. Um, I wanna get into how we actually apply base coat because this is really, really important. So if I talk about the nail plate for a second, okay? So this is the nail plate. Right? It's the natural piece of material that grows out of our finger back here and actually back here, which I'm going to do an anatomy. Uh, I'm going to do an anatomy video as well so you guys can get an idea of how the nail plate works. But essentially this whole area, the whole piece that we put product on top of is called the nail plate. Okay, And the nail plate grows from back here. We've got an area called the matrix in our finger and that's where this nail plate material grows from. Now I do have a little bit of base gel on my natural nails. I always keep base coat on my natural nails. Why? Because I don't wanna to touch my natural nail multiple times. I like to leave my natural nail alone and even if I'm doing soak off gel, hard gel, anything, I typically will file down to this layer and I leave a little bit of hard gel or soak off gel or whatever I'm using on my nail plate and it just keeps my nail plate protected at all times. But I can still show you guys exactly how to apply this. Now you would do all of your cuticle preparation and everything, which you can see my finger is nice and clean. And I'm also going to make sure that I remove all the oils off of my nail, which I did put lotion on this morning, so I'm gonna make sure I clean that off, okay? So I'm using a wipe with some rubbing alcohol, and I do mix a little bit of acetone into my rubbing alcohol to really help with the dehydration. I'm gonna do a full video on nail prep, but for now I want you guys to just see that I'm cleaning off any of the oils and bacteria that are on my nail. And I'm going to start with the potted base coat to show you guys, because this one is probably the most different for a lot of you. With a potted base coat, it's a two part. So you're gonna use your gel in the pot and you're also going to use a brush. Um, and brushes really, you just wanna look for a typical gel brush. Um, this one is a round brush, but there's also square. Um, there's lots of different shapes and there's also lots of different sizes. This is probably a size four. It's got a little bit longer of a, um, of a, a belly here, but I do like this because it's just nice and flexible. And I always leave a little bit of gel on my brushes. So before I start applying on the nail, I wanna get a little bit of product absorbed into the bristles of my brush. And I do that by putting a little bit of gel on my brush and I'm just going to work this into the bristles of my brush. So I kind of just gently smush back and forth, okay? Kind of like as if I were about to paint something. You might have seen painters do this. And what this is doing is it's really working that base coat into my brush, and it's making my brush very flexible. As you can see, my brush kind of moves with the gel now, okay? And it just kind of gets my, I call it getting my brush warmed up, all right? So we're gonna use a very sparing amount. So you can use your lid or you can use a palette or um, any type of surface to do this on. And I'm just going to take a very small amount. And if this were my client, I can turn this around for you guys, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start down here, okay? I'm gonna start about two thirds of the way down my nail and I can zoom in just a little bit more for you guys. So you can see, okay? So I'm just starting maybe like about halfway down the nail. I never put base coat all the way up here because if I have too much on my brush, I really don't wanna flood that cuticle area. So what I always do is I always just put a little bit of gel on the bottom half of the nail. And then once I feel like I've got that base coat applied and I don't have any excess on my brush, I can take that, I can even scrape off excess if I need to. I'm gonna take my brush, and this is the only time you will ever see me put pressure on my brush like this. 
I'm going to shimmy my brush around while keeping contact and I'm just going to use these shaky kind of shimmy motions to really work that base coat into the surface of the nail. Okay, so you can see there's texture there. Right, you see the little bit of texture you can see through. Okay, and I'm just going to get as close to the cuticle as I can without touching it. That's why it's a nice idea to keep, oh, losing my focus here, sorry guys. Okay, that's why it's a good idea to keep the brush attached to the nail while you're working because if you're kind of polishing like this, it's very easy to accidentally hit up here on the skin. So when I'm up close to the cuticle area, I just push my bristles and kind of put pressure on the brush, spread out my brush and use this shimmy motion all over, okay? And I even rotate the finger to the side. And the advantage of gel base coat is that it's shiny. It's shiny so I can check where I have base coat. I can check all the way to the tip of my nail by turning it to see, oh, is it shiny right there? Is it shiny on this side? All the way to the side, okay? Now what happens if you have a short nail? If you have a short nail, you're going to want to turn your brush around and you're gonna come at it this way. So you're gonna put a little bit of product on the end of your brush and what it does is, if I can tip this up for you guys, I'm gonna do it this way so you guys can see, okay? So if I was working on this finger, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the bristles of my brush. You can see there's still even a little bit of product. I can even put a teeny bit more. This was a really short nail. I would pull the skin back with my finger and if this were a client, I'd be kind of like pushing it back like this underneath, okay, and I'd be coming at it this way. But just to show you guys, you can also turn the person's hand around if you want to. I pull back the skin, I put a little bit of product on my brush, and you can see right there in front of my brush, I've got a little bit of product, and then I'm just gonna push it up and over the tip of the nail, like this, okay? This is a really good way to apply base coat to extremely short nails, especially when the person, of course, wants you know, red or whatever gel polish, which is really difficult to do. Um, it allows your bristles of your brush to go up and over the lip, like so, and it applies that base coat right to the free edge. So instead of capping the free edge like this, which is the typical way to do it, right? We usually just woo hoo hoo like that at the end. It allows you to get gel on the end of the nail without actually touching the skin underneath. And then before I cure it, I can just paint nicely to smooth that out so I don't have a ridge. So it should be smooth and there shouldn't be any hump of product on the tip of the nail. And I can also, if I want to fill in any divots or I want to do, you know, um, a little bit more to fill in any areas or to create maybe like a mini overlay with my base coat, I can absolutely do that. So I can put a little bit of gel on the nail here. Now that I have that slip layer or that wet layer, it's going to self level. And now I have that nice shiny finish. I can push a little bit more right back in here to kind of fill in that area. Okay. Like so, let it self level. All right. And again, I'm using my reflection to check where I have gel, where I don't have gel, but this is a really good way to apply your base. You can also create a little bit of a mini overlay for the client, especially if you're going to e-file. I would do this a couple times to really create that protective layer. And if you're happy with it, then you can cure it. Okay, so I'm going to cure my nail really quickly. Oh, and I forgot to plug in my lamp again. Sorry, one second. All right, so I'm going to cure that nail. And I think this trick with potted gel is really going to help you guys be able to have control over it, to be able to achieve what you want. But as you can see, I leave a lot of texture and I barely use any product as I work that into the nail plate. That's so important. If you were to look at your nail plate under a microscope, you'll see that there's lots of layers that get lifted up, especially when we're doing all of our nail prep and our filing and our buffing. It really lifts those layers up. And so what we're doing with our brush is we're trying to get that gel in between all of those different layers on our nail plate to actually grab onto the nail plate. That's why if you're just using kind of a polishing action or if you're using way too much primer or way too much protein bonder, you're filling in all of those areas with another product and the gel base is not actually able to create adhesion onto the nail plate itself. Another thing I wanted to talk about is if you feel like you're having lifting, a lot of nail techs, what they immediately do is they reach for another product. They're like, oh, I'm gonna use acid primer and I'm gonna use this protein bonder and I'm gonna use five different base coats and I'm gonna do triple layers and I'm gonna do all this crazy stuff, right? 
Well, what that does is it actually creates a lot of variables in your service. What ends up happening is you don't really understand what part of the service is going wrong. And usually more layers in between the gel and the actual nail plate creates more lifting than if you just put the gel directly on the nail plate to begin with. So when in doubt, or especially if you're having issues with anything, take out all the extra products, get rid of your crazy cleansers, get rid of all your crazy primers and protein bonders. And another key thing is to think about what type of cleanser you're using. If it has color or it smells nice, it usually has some type of product in there that again is gonna leave a residue and now we're not able to get our gel directly onto the nail plate. I typically use a cleanser that just has alcohol and acetone in it and you can usually see that by reading the ingredients or make your own by buying 90% rubbing alcohol or better and do about three quarters of the way up your jar with rubbing alcohol and another quarter of the way up with just plain old acetone, okay? It's another key point to making sure that things don't lift, don't come off, and don't inhibit your base coat from being able to adhere to the nail plate. It's really, really important. All right, so I've got my nail back. It is all cured. And I wanted to show you guys that this has an inhibition layer. Now, if I were going to do a full service, I would leave the inhibition layer. Why? Because as soon as that gets covered up and it gets cured again, the inhibition layer is going to get cured. Remember, the inhibition layer is the layer of gel that was exposed to oxygen while it was curing in the lamp. And so it is uncured gel. I don't want to put this on my skin. I don't want to touch it because it's uncured product. Um, and if I, again, if I was going to do other layers of things, I can just proceed with my appointment, no problem, okay? But just to show you guys what inhibition layer is, I'm going to use a quick dry wipe here and I'm just going to push on this so you guys can see what happens. Can you guys see that it made a mark there on my nail? So that is the uncured gel that is sitting on top of the nail layer and it's on top of that gel base coat. If you are mixing different formulas of gel, you're using a different base coat with a different color, this inhibition layer is uncured product and it could have a different chemical formula than the gel color or other gel that you're going to use. And this is also where people go wrong is they start to mix a lot of different things together. You have to remember that this product and this uncured gel that's on, my, on the surface of my base coat has a specific chemical formula. And if I mix a different product that has a different chemical formula on top of this, it may cause problems where I have that oil and water type of look or it could be that these two things don't adhere together and one peels off of another. So if you're wanting to use one brand of base that you absolutely love, but you want to use a different brand of color or a different brand of builder, here is how you can do that, okay? So we're gonna remove the inhibition layer. I'm gonna gently wiggle with some cleanser and I'm gonna pull it down towards the free edge of my nail so that I eliminate any uncured gel from getting on my skin. And again, I can rotate my wipe as I do different fingers, I always kind of move my wipe, so I'm using a nice clean spot with my cleanser, okay? So now my nail is not sticky anymore. I still have the cured base coat. It's not super shiny or anything because it's just base coat, but I have this adhered to my nail plate. I'm very happy about that. And I can also now buff this if I want to and put a different gel on top of it. So if I wanted to do that, I could buff it and then put whatever product I want on top because now I've removed the issue of one chemical formula not working with another, okay? All right, um, we talked about inhibition layers. We talked about adhesion and how to get that. We talked about the nail plate. This is a soak off formula. It's a sanding free formula and it's also LED and CFL curable. So this will cure in any type of ultraviolet light, which is really nice, okay? And then I'm going to quickly show you guys one more, just to show you a different type. Okay, so again, if we're using a bottled base coat, with bottled, the brush comes in the bottle. Okay, so here I've got the brush in my bottle. I want to remove most of the product from the brush. And this is where it gets a little bit trickier because there is product that gets stored up here when it dips down into the bottle. The product kind of gets stuck up here on the handle of the brush. So sometimes you'll end up with drips or too much product coming down to your brush. So you really wanna take your time and get rid of any excess gel that's on there. All right, so I've got my nail here. 
So same thing, if I was gonna do this out of a bottle, I'm just going to start by applying from here down, just in case I have a drip on my brush or I have too much product. And then I can use the brush in the bottle to shimmy, 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 put pressure on it, shimmy it as close to the nail as, or sorry, as close to the skin as I can. Oops, sorry, I'm blocking. Okay. And I can come down and I really wanna work this in, especially if I've got a naked nail that's never had base coat on it before, or even if I'm trying to adhere two products together, okay? I wanna make sure I do that nice shimmy motion. Again, I can come at it this way and push product, like bulldoze product, up and over the tip of my nail, like so. Okay, so that way I end up capping the edge. Okay, and then I can cure that. All right, so that is basically everything you would need to know about base coat. I'm also gonna give you guys some quick do's and don'ts for while you're practicing. So do's, let's go over those first because those are really important. So we talked about scrubbing in your base layer. We wanna make sure that the base coat is scrubbed into the nail plate. We wanna use a slip layer technique if we're gonna add more base coat to build up a layer, like if we're gonna do an overlay or if we just wanna add a little bit more strength or smoothness to the nail, we can do that with that slip layer, which is creating that first wet layer and then adding more product on top of it while it's still wet. We wanna get as close to the skin without touching it. Remember, we're talking about chemicals, we're using products that are safe for nail application, but they're not intended for skin. And we, we want to make sure that we're not applying product on the skin because that can lead to sensitivities, allergies, stuff like that. Um, we wanna keep the product where we want it. And it also can lead to lifting if you've got the product up on the layer of the skin. So we wanna make sure the product is just on the nail plate itself. We also wanna cap the free edge. Gel shrinks when it cures. And so capping the free edge is really the way to ensure that the gel base coat is adhered all the way on the end of the nail. And if there is a little bit of shrinking, which all gels do shrink a little bit when they cure, that that gel is gonna stay wrapped around the free edge of the nail. And we can use our reflection while we're working to make sure that we've applied the base coat where we want it and also keep it off where we don't want it. So using your reflection is a great place to check your work and make sure you've got that base coat applied properly. Some don'ts that you guys should watch out for while you're practicing. Don't paint your base coat on like it's nail polish. We wanna work that base coat into the nail plate. We don't just wanna polish it on top. Also, don't apply paper thin coats. Paper thin, because the gel cures, can actually lead to like a Swiss cheese effect. So if you've ever applied your base coat and it cures and you see these pits or these, these holes in it, that can either be caused by the base coat being too thin or maybe you had some residual oil on the nail before you applied your base coat. But using that slip layer technique is a great way to make sure that you have enough product on the nail before it goes into the lamp. Obviously don't flood the cuticle. We wanna keep the base coat off of the skin and all products off of the skin. And by controlling the amount that's on our brush, that really allows us to make sure that we're not going to flood the cuticle. And also by starting in the middle of the nail instead of at the cuticle gives us more control. Don't apply your gel blindly. We wanna get up close and personal, just like I zoomed in on this video. You guys really wanna look at the nail closely, use your light and your reflection to see where you've applied gel and where you haven't, and really make sure that you're looking up close at the nail while you're working. That will help you be much more precise and eliminate a lot of issues as you continue to practice. Don't experiment on the fly with mixing and matching products. Remember, we're using different formulas of chemicals and all different brands and different types and everything have different formulations. So mixing them together without understanding how that can interact on the nail is a big no-no, especially on paying clients. Um, mixing and matching is just another variable in our service that creates unforeseen consequences. So I recommend you guys don't mix and match until you really, really understand more about gel chemistry. It just allows you to be much more sure of your services and to be able to apply them with confidence. So those are my tips and tricks for you guys. All right, so again, same procedure, but this time I'm just using a base coat that comes in a bottle. Again, the same thing is going to apply, which is that shimming motion, putting pressure on your brush, really working that base coat into the nail plate. Um, and, uh, and you don't need to use a lot of extra products. I mean, really, you just need to use a high quality base coat will allow you to just use the base coat itself. Um, all the base coats I'm using already contain all of the 
um, priming agents that you need to have on the nail plate. So really all you need to do is prep the nail plate, get the cuticle cleaned up, make sure there's no skin or debris or oils on the nail plate, and you can go right in with your base coat application, all right? So I hope that helps you guys. I hope that helps you understand a little bit more about the importance of base coat and how it should be applied. And in our next tutorial, I'm gonna be talking about nail files, buffers, and all of that good stuff. Um, I'll be going through kind of a little bit randomly about how we can start a service, do all of those different things, but I want you guys to just practice the base coat for the next week. This is really important. Um, I want you guys to just get a feel for how much pressure to put on your brush, how much product to apply. Again, you're gonna see some natural texture shining through your base coat and you can put a little bit more over on that slip layer once you have that worked into the nail plate. But I want you guys to try that first and see how it goes. And then uh, any questions, comment below this video. I'll make sure we address that in our next video before we move into color application. All right, thanks for watching guys, bye. All right guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I'll be in touch again soon with another video. I hope this stuff really helps you guys ad adhere all of your gel to your nail plate better. And I think if you guys practice this, you guys are gonna get really good at base coat, which is one of the most important layers in our full nail service. So practice this base coat technique, depending on what type of base, you can use a pot and a brush, or you can use a bottled version, and try and get rid of all the extra variables. If you're having issues with lifting, try just bringing it back to basics because like I said earlier, all of those different products, although they can create better adhesion, if you're overdoing it or if you're using way too many different chemicals at the same time, you could actually be causing a problem instead of a solution. All right, so good practicing to all of you guys. Hope everything is helpful. And uh, if you guys run into any issues over the next week, please leave a comment below this video so I can be sure to include that in our next tutorial. I'll answer whatever questions you guys have and uh, I'll be in touch again soon. All right, bye guys.